Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Um, this is part two of Learn Lightroom 5. Um, in part one, we jumped right into the develop module and we processed this photograph. This was the start where we started with the raw file. And this is where we are right now. Um, we did that just using the different uh, functions in Lightroom and we didn't touch any of the tools. Um, in this video, we're gonna, I'm going to show you most of these tools up here. And um, let's get started. We got, um, I hit the Y key and I'll come back to my full screen. I could hit Y again, you could go back to show you the before and after. So you could just hit Y back and forth to toggle between the two. We'll start out with cropping. Typically I'd probably crop earlier than this. Um, I'm not really showing you my uh, true workflow. In video three, we're going to do another photograph, and I'm going to do it from beginning to end, and sh do it as though I was uh, the way I always do my photographs. So you'll see uh, my workflow. Uh, but for now, uh, in this one, as I mentioned, I'm just going to show you the tools. Um, this crop tool we did uh, touch on earlier in part one. Um, I straighten the photograph by uh, using the angle control and uh, check out. Um, part one and if you're interested in that. Um, right now though um, we're going to crop this. Um, when you initially uh, turn on the crop tool it comes up um, with this grid pattern. Hopefully you could see it on the video. Very faint lines. Uh, it's in the rule of thirds. Uh, you want something important or interesting hopefully where the uh, lines intersect. Um, there are other overlay patterns um, in Lightroom. You just hit the O key and you'll toggle between all the different patterns. Um, I hit the O key once and I came to this uh, rectangle pattern. And same thing here, uh, you want something interesting in the, um, into the, where the points of the lines intersect or in these two triangles on the end in this uh, square in the middle. Um, if possible. Um, now, um, in this photograph actually might work better for this pattern, but let me show you the rest. Hit O again, and you have the triangle uh, overlay. Uh, again, where points touch, or lines touch, I should say. You try to get something interesting there. This too you could flip. You hit Shift O, and you could flip it. Um, so just hit Shift O to flip it. Hit O again, and we have the golden ratio. This is very similar to the rule of thirds and sometimes gets confused with the rule of thirds. Um, but this isn't in equal thirds. This is uh, 40, 20, 40, uh, vertical and in horizontal. And But it's the same thing. You want something where these lines intersect. Um, you want something interesting there. Hit O again, and we have uh, the Fibonacci sequence, um, this kind of curled line. And in this you want something interesting right where that uh, little uh, Fibonacci sequence begins, right there. Um, you hit Shift O on this one and you could flip it. And I think it flips eight different ways. So you just try to you know flip it around until you get um, it where you want it. And then you crop your picture. You want the point of interest right here. Maybe a uh, uh, giraffe's eye or something you'd have right there. Okay, hit O again and we come up to this um, patterns here of um, if you're going to be printing 2x3s, 5x7s, 4x5s. Um, in this instance uh, this helps you size your picture so it will um, print um, properly. Uh, hit Shift O and it will shift from the uh, vertical to the horizontal. And hit O again and we come up with this uh, tight grid pattern and this is just um, not so much a crop overlay but to help you uh, make sure everything's level, uh, that your verticals are vertical, horizontals are horizontal. And when you hit O, uh, finally you're back to the rule of thirds. Now I mentioned we'll probably use this one. Um, so what you do is there's these little handles all around uh, the photograph. Um, you could just drag them in. If you make a mistake, um, don't worry about it. Everything you do in Lightroom 
is non-destructive. Um, so you make a mistake, you could always go back and fix it, no big deal. Um, in this case too, if you want to keep proportional, see I could drag it like kind of like this all over the place. But let's say I want to keep my proportions. Hold the shift key in when you do this and it will stay where you put it. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'd like this to be in this in this uh, triangle area there. So we'll try to bring that up. Oops. Bring this over. I'm using a Wacom tablet and it's acting a little wacky at the moment. And maybe just bring this up a little more. Well, for the sake of argument, let's just leave it there. Of course, on your own photograph, you could spend a lot more time trying to get it just right. Um, so that's the crop tool. Um, this next tool is the clone tool. Um, this is if you have something unwanted in the picture, um, you could get rid of it. Now, it comes with this uh, brush here, and you could size this brush by hitting the uh, bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket makes it smaller, and the right bracket makes it bigger. You also could size it over here, as you could see it. Uh, to the right of my screen there. Um, what you do is you want to make it just a little bigger than whatever you want to clone out and this is a unique to Lightroom 5. Um, you just paint on something and it will sample another area. If you like that sample right where it is you you could just hit enter and I kinda like where it is. If I didn't like it I could I could move it. But I kinda liked where it was and just hit enter and just like that it's gone. Now um, there is a person over here and let's say I don't whoops I don't want that um, person in this picture. Just take them out and hit enter. Okay and that's that that isn't so good but you know you get the idea the red eye tool we're not going to use obviously there's nobody in here with red eyes um, this is the graduated filter tool and um, this is as though you had a graduated filter on your camera you could uh, simu simulate it in Lightroom and what I'll show you here is if you hold the alt key in or the option key in you could reset it see how this effect turns to reset. So it sets these all back to zero. What I want to do, let's say I want to make this a little darker so I could turn my exposure down a full stop. And you go up here and you just pull down. Now you can see you could angle it how you like. Uh, kind of like it like that. Now one thing, if you, if you uh, pull it down while you hold the shift key in, it will come down perfectly perfectly straight. It won't angle like like this. So when you're happy with it where you have it, uh, hit the enter key. And uh, you could adjust it now. Let's say I want to make it real bright. I want to make it real bright. I want to make it darker. I could change uh, the uh, color temperature, stuff like that. But we'll just leave it right there and hit close. The next tool over is um, the radial filter. Um, this is uh, like adding a spotlight or you could add a, a vignette. And let me show you. Um, what you do is I want to make this a little brighter. So I could just go out here and make this circle. Now um, it's kind of doing the opposite. As you can see, it's making it brighter out here and darker in here. Well, all I got to do, do is go down here and, and tap Invert Mask. Now it's way too bright, obviously, so we're going to pull the exposure down. I just want a little splash of light on that. Something like that. And when we're happy with that, hit Close. This, too, is if you hold the Alter Option key in, 
you could reset it. So you could reset it before you start if you have all these sliders from your previous adjustments all over the place. Okay, finally the last thing is the brush. And the brush is, is, has the same controls as the, the radial tool and the graduated filter. Um, you could just paint exposure, you could paint contrast, whatever you want to paint on the picture. Um, what we're going to do though is um, hold the option key in again and hit reset again. Now see it brought my exposure, everything zeroed out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little bit of brightness um, in here. And again you could uh, resize this brush by hitting the left bracket key and the right bracket key. And I want it kind of big. So I just want to, as you can see the effect, is it makes it a little brighter over there. And maybe a little brighter over here. Okay. Now I'd like it these rocks back here in the right hand corner, those a little brighter too. So I could get a new brush, click new, and I'm going to make this a little smaller by hitting the left bracket key. And let's just make it a little. Now see I, I went too far and it got up in the sky over here. You hold the alt key down and you'll watch See how the brush has the plus in the middle? Hit the Alt key and it turned into a minus. Now, what we want to do though is that's way too big. So we're going to bring that, make that smaller. Make this one pretty small. And we hold that that Alt key in, and we could take away where we went and spilled over. And that's it. That's uh, the brush key. If you wanted to, you know, change. Uh, affect the color in the sky with exposure, you could do that. Uh, tint, um, you could paint in sharpness or paint in clarity. Uh, in this photograph I'm really not interested in doing any of that. Um, having auto mask on um, helps it um, differentiate between uh, when you're painting on let's say this rock and you don't get it on the sky. It, um, it helps. It's not perfect. As you can see, when I did these rocks, it bled over a little bit. Um, but it's very easy to crack to just hold the Alt key in and, and the brush turns into the minus sign in the middle. And you could take away where you messed up. And that's it. Uh, that's a pretty quick overview of five of these tools. Obviously, we didn't do the red eye tool. But we're going to do that in a future video. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, this photograph is um, pretty much done. The next video um, I'm going to get really this I mean this was pretty a quick overview of and going pretty quickly um, on how to develop a photograph. Uh, the next one is going to be more in depth and I'm going to show you my actual workflow in the develop module um, from beginning to end uh, doing everything. And um, we'll, on that one, we'll use every single control here. Because in this one, we didn't use any split toning and we didn't use tone curve. Um, and uh, that will be in part three. So be looking for that one. That will be coming soon. Um, again, though, I uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.